there is a, a sense of disappointment among young people about politics, and there are a lot of different reasons for it. You know, some take the position that they were for President Obama and he didn't revolutionize uh, our country. You know, the poor man faced implacable hostility and got a lot done and deserves an enormous amount of credit. But the idea that somehow um, the Affordable Care Act or saving the economy were not big enough accomplishments is just <laughs> bewildering to me. Because I know how hard it was and what a touch and go deal it was. Some are new to politics completely. They're children of the Great Recession. And they are living in their parents' basement. Uh, they feel that they got their education and the jobs that are available to them are not at all what they envisioned for themselves. And they don't see much of a future. I met with a group of young uh, black millennials today and you know, one of the young women said, you know, none of us feel like we have the job that we should have gotten out of college. Um, and we don't believe that the job market is going to give us much of a chance. So that is a mindset that is really affecting their politics. And so if, if you're feeling that you're consigned to, you know, being a barista or, you know, some other job that doesn't pay a lot and doesn't have much of a ladder of opportunity attached to it, then the idea that maybe, just maybe, you could be part of a political revolution is pretty appealing. So I think we all should be really understanding of that, and we should try to do the best we can, uh, not to be you know, a wet blanket on idealism. You want people to be idealistic, you want them to set big goals, but to take what we can achieve now and try to present them as bigger goals. I mean, getting our country to 100% universal coverage is a big deal. Getting that Affordable Care Act to work better for people, getting the costs down so that people feel that they can afford the care that they now have access to. That's a big deal. You know, going after infrastructure, manufacturing, combating climate change by setting some big goals like half a billion new solar panels by the end of my first term and enough clean power to power every home in America by the end of my second term, that's a big goal. So what we have to do and what I'm trying to do um, is to make the case that we've got ideals, we've got big goals, but we also believe that the path to progress is one that you just have to get up every day and work on. You have to make it your life's work if you do this full time. You have to make it part of your civic responsibility um, for others and just keep making that case. Um, it's not as glamorous, it's not as exciting, it doesn't promise a revolution. I mean, I'm still trying to understand the revolution part, because here's how I think about it. In order, I mean, and, and, and Senator Sanders sort of alludes to this. In order to have the revolution, first we have to take back the Senate and get to 60 votes. <laughs> then we've got to take back the House. And that may require some redistricting in order to get people out of safe Republican seats so they can be competitive again. I think we're already in like year six or seven uh, of a two-year term. So, you know, those of us who understand this, who have been experienced, who have worked in it, know that it's, it's a false promise. But I don't think you tell idealistic people, particularly young people, that they've bought into a false promise. You try to do the best you can to say, hey, you know, that, that's his view, that's what he is offering you. But here's another way where actually we can achieve a lot of what we have said starting day one and, and make a real difference in people's lives. And I tell them all the time, you know, a lot of people I meet can't wait. They can't wait for a revolution. They can't afford their prescription drugs right now. They can't wait for Planned Parenthood to be shut down and they're then denied health care because they don't have access to it. So we, we have to live in this space of, look, here's what we can do, here's what's achievable, and here's a lot of people we could help right away. And if we all do our part, we can actually get more, better jobs with rising incomes, which will help you too. So that's the best we can do. Yes, sir. Right over there.